Hey guys, have you ever wanted to learn how to create your own beautiful, professional, technical drawings to accompany your fashion illustrations? Possibly you want to add them to your tech packs or your fashion portfolio. Great, in this tutorial or in this whole series of tutorials, I'm gonna show you two different techniques to create accurate digital specification illustrations using Adobe Illustrator. First, we'll start by creating some basic garment silhouettes. Then we'll start adding specific design details to those silhouettes. And next, we'll work on adding sleeves. And finally, once you've mastered all of the basics, I'll show you how to combine all of these assets together quickly and effortlessly to create hundreds of specification illustrations based on your specific project. Not only that, but I've also created a fully editable master illustration pack that you can download and use as a starting point when it comes to creating your own fashion illustrations or let's say tech illustrations. The pack contains all of the work that we're gonna be featuring in this series of tutorials and it'll help you enormously when it comes to creating your own specification drawings. So let's get started. This is part one in a whole series of tutorials covering this subject. Okay, so I'm gonna open up Adobe Illustrator on my computer. And I'm also, I've downloaded the proportionate model template and I'm just gonna simply double click this to open this up in Adobe Illustrator. And this is our proportionate model template. So first of all, a few, a few little tools that we can have a look at just to make the process a little bit easier when it comes to working Adobe Illustrator. So if I hold down my space key on my keyboard, I get a little hand. If I then click and drag, I can move around the page really easily. Also, if I hold down command and plus, I can zoom in. Command plus plus to zoom in, command minus to zoom out. So this just gives you some really easy navigational options here. It's far easier than using these side scroll bars uh, and this bottom scroll bar as well and zooming in also you'd have to go to your little zoom key and then do this and so it's much much easier. Okay so we have our portrait model template so first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give us a little bit of space here on the artboard so this is our artboard. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit quite a lot. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to hit, so what is it, command, option and then P which brings up our document setup. You can also find this by going to file, document setup and here we're going to go edit artboard and then as you can see, we can now edit our artboard. I'm just gonna get this little corner here, click and then drag and make it quite large. And we can zoom out. I can even click and drag this and move it. Let's move it up to this far top corner. And then let's just drag this, make it the whole size of this whole document. Zoom in, let's just move over. Perfect, okay, so this is our pro proportionate model template, which is great. So first of all, as I mentioned, we're gonna start working on silhouettes and creating, let's say, some basic outlines of garments, which we can then later add with design elements or add to them with design elements to kind of create more of a, let's say, finished looking garment. And then we'll head on to sleeves, etc. So basically, first of all, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna get my big selection tool. Also, if you're not familiar with Adobe Illustrator and how to use it, then we have a really fantastic starter tutorial. Um, it's called Digital Pattern Cutting in Adobe Illustrator. And we just basically explain all of the different tools on the left-hand side here, all the tools on the right-hand side, how to set up your workspace, and also how to use Adobe Illustrator. Although it's for digital pattern cutting, the tools are exactly the same when it comes to illustration. So have a look at that. It's on our website, patternlab.london, and we'll add a link to this tutorial so you can have a look at that. But let's get started. So first of all, I'm gonna get my big section tool. I'm just gonna click and drag over this whole model template. I'm gonna go object and then lock selection. Now what this does is it just simply means that we can't edit it. So if we're gonna draw on top of this, we're not gonna have any conflicting lines or we're not gonna be able to edit the existing model template, which is really handy. So first of all, to start drawing our, let's say silhouette, I'm gonna start working with bodycon style. So something that's very fitted to the body uh, that has very little ease, for example. And the reason why we're using a proportionate model template is because we want our finished, let's say spec, or spec drawing to look proportionate and to look well balanced. So this is why we're using our template to do this first of all. So I'm gonna go to my pen tool just up here. I'm gonna click on that. I'm also gonna remove the fill. So this is the fill and this is the line color. If you want to select the line color, just simply select the line and you can double click to select the color, but let's go for black. Click okay, I'm gonna select the fill and I'm gonna remove it by just simply clicking this little line through. So now we can draw shapes, etc., using the pencil. So let's just get rid of that. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start drawing this, uh, let's say, a silhouette, a bodycon silhouette. And also you can go to your stroke width over here on the right, and we can make this, let's make it two for a thick outline. So I'm gonna start off at the center front neck point, and we have this center front line because we're gonna be doing everything. We're not gonna be drawing both sides. We're gonna draw it one side, and then we're gonna mirror it so we have something really beautiful and perfect. Obviously, this is different if you're working with asymmetric styles. If you have a different left and right, then obviously you'd have to design them separately. Anyway, let's get started. I'm gonna click at the center neck front, 
then the side neck point, let's go to the shoulder point. We'll go down to the bust, we're gonna give it a little bit of ease here so it's not directly on the body, a little bit of ease again. Let's go to the hip, and then we can go down. I've also marked different, um, let's say, lengths. So you've got thigh length, knee, calf, ankle, floor, etc. Let's just go to, for the floor length. And instead of going straight down, I'm just gonna go in ever so slightly. Click, and I'm gonna go, just that center point line, but I'm gonna go ever so slightly longer than the center front. I'll explain why in a minute. So this is our basic outline. Next, I'm gonna to go to my convert anchor point, uh, my anchor point tool, which is also Shift C on your keyboard. I'm just gonna click on this first point and drag. And you can see we can now start to curve this line. So simply by clicking and dragging and moving your mouse, you can then start to obviously curve the neckline. Also, if you hold down the Shift key, it'll lock it to the horizontal, which makes it much easier when it comes to drawing this curve. So I'm just gonna click and drag that out. Also with the armhole, click and drag. And then also if you release and then click on this point here, you can then move that point in. This might be quite a dramatic armhole, so we can go to our small selection tool, click on this line which brings up the handle and we can then just move that in ever so slightly. Great, once again go to your convert anchor point tool, I'm gonna to click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the, the vertical, and then click and drag, lock it to the vertical. I could even get my small selection tool, I could click on this point here, then with my arrow keys I could nudge that in to change the ease, you see? We can change the ease of this block. So for example, if you wanted far more waist ease for your silhouette, you could just simply get your small selection tool, hang on one second, let's go back. Get your small selection tool, which is the white one, click on that point, and then you can just nudge with your arrow keys to the left. And if you hold down the shift key, it'll do much, much greater increments. So you can change the ease and change the silhouette of this pattern, for example, or of this uh, spec drawing. Okay, so this is pretty much at, oh wait, we have one down the bottom here. So I'm gonna get my anchor point tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal. And that just gives us a little bit of 3D shaping. But essentially that's longer than the floor length. So I'm just gonna get my small section tool, click and drag over both these points and then my arrow keys nudge it up until there we go. So the front of it touches the um, floor line. So now we have our basic outline. And if I were to fill this, so double click, let's just go for yellow, for example, you can see that it's just a very basic silhouette. So let's go back. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my big selection tool. I'm going to click on this whole item, go, uh, and then right click, transform, reflect, and then just hit vertical, and then, so not horizontal, but vertical, and then copy. And we can then just drag this over to the opposite side. If you hold down the shift key, it'll lock it to the same height as the existing side. Let's just move it till it roughly meets in the center. Get our small selection tool, click and drag over these two endpoints here, right click, average, both, click OK, and then right click and then join. And that just say, simply joins these two lines together. Same at the bottom, right click. So small section tool, click and drag, right click, average, just to make sure those both those points are sitting on top of each other. Right click and then join. And now if we fill this with a color, you can see we have a very basic, simple silhouette. So this is great. So we've created one body con style here, which is great, but what if we wanted to create a bodice or a thigh length or a knee length, for example? Well, to do that, it's really simple. Um, so first of all, what I'm gonna do is get my big section tool. I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna go copy and paste. So Command C and Command V on my keyboard. Let's just drag it off to the side here. This is one silhouette. So one lovely long line, let's say body con dress silhouette. So now I'm gonna get my small section tool. I'm gonna click and drag over these two endpoints, and I can simply click and drag this up, hold down my shift key so it locks it to the vertical, and I can go knee length or calf length or ankle length or thigh length, for example. If I go too far up, as you can see, we're gonna get some really weird shapes here. So I'm just gonna to go to, let's take it to knee length, get my big section tool, click, copy, paste, and I'm now starting to build up a whole selection of these blocks. Get my small selection tool, click and drag, click and drag this up, or maybe we want to go for calf length, for example copy and paste this, and so now we're starting to build up our silhouettes. So let's have a look at the bodice, for example. So if we want to create the bodice, we couldn't simply just select these and then bring it up to the waist because mm, looks like she's kind of pulling her dress up, which is very odd. So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna simply go to the cut tool, which is the scissor tool on the left-hand side here. I'm just gonna snip at this point and this point. And I could then get my big selection tool, click and then drag this away. Perhaps you could make a skirt from this, for example, like a skirt block or a skirt silhouette. And to do that, you could get your pen tool, click, let's go down ever so slightly, find that center line, click, click, let's get our convert anchor point tool, click and drag, and that could be a basic skirt block. And you could also add, for example, you know, you could add a waistband to this, but we're gonna to come to that later when it comes to adding, let's say, little details. We're just creating silhouettes for now. So now we have our basic bodice block because we just simply snipped and snipped, removed the skirt, and now we have the bodice. 
So I'm going to do the exact same thing, get my pen tool. I'm going to click, and let's go down ever so slightly, click, click, get my anchor, convert anchor point tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal, and this would be our bodice block. Copy, paste. Perfect. So now we're starting to build up our blocks, but what if we don't want to create a bodycon style? Quite possibly we want to work with something that's a little bit, uh, let's say has a little bit more ease, or maybe it doesn't have any waist shaping, etc. Well, it's very simple. Just get your small section tool, click on this point here, get your nudge keys or your arrow keys, and just nudge this out. So we could create more sort of like a, uh, not an A-line, but sort of like a very straight line dress. We could even go to the delete anchor point and just remove that point, remove this point, and as you can see, we have more sort of like a tubular dress. We could even get the small selection tool, click and drag, and then move these up, for example. And we could even just start to remove these points. So this is me adapting an existing block. Get our small selection tool. You could click on that and then simply nudge it out, like so. Do exactly the same to one side that you did to the other. Uh, so you can start to basically adapt this silhouette depending on what your um, project requires, for example, you could even raise the armholes at the moment at the bus line, which is quite low down. So you can start to adapt this just by simply with a small section tool, clicking on the points, you can move it around, you can also, let's say, change the curvature here. However, if you're doing something to one side, you probably want to do it to the same to the other, but it's very difficult to keep it consistent. So what I would do is, when you're making these adjustments, I would just simply snip, snip, delete one side, make the changes that you need to make to one edge. Maybe you could bring this in, so if you want to have more sort of like a, uh, what do you call it, like a, not a halter neck, but um, change the shape of the armhole, or sorry, sh change the, the width of the shoulder, you could do all these things. Just get your small section tool, click on that point, and you can move it around, you can make it really fine, you could even have like a halter neck. You could even bring all of these points down, and you could even add a strap, just going to your pen tool, click, 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 click. So you can start to build up your pattern uh, or your silhouettes. Perfect. Okay, so you kind of get the concept of how we're creating these silhouettes and it is all just a case of using this model template to kind of like map out different styles. So for example, we could go in again. We could let's say, let's paste in the bodice like so. Just pasting the bodice in and let's say I want to drag these armholes up. So I'm getting my small selection tool, click and drag over these two points, nudge with my arrow keys to move that up. Uh, we could also then, let's just snip here and here, remove this side. We could then change this. We could then move the shoulder point in ever so slightly. And then we could just simply get our big section tool, click on this element, right click, transform, reflect, copy, move it across. And then once again, small section tool, click and drag, average, right click, join, click and drag, right click, average, click OK, click and drag, right click, join. And so let's say we wanted to, for example, I don't know, put like a, a really cute sort of like, we could do an empire line and we could go down to the thigh length here. I could click and then drag to create almost like a, quite a blues only kind of dress. Click and drag. And then here, for example, we could use the convert anchor point tool, just put a little bit of shaping in there. And then let's just simply get this element. So big selection tool, click, right click, transform, reflect, and then copy. Move this across to the opposite side. You can always nudge it with your arrow keys to get it in line with the actual bodice. And then here you could just simply click and drag, right click, average, click OK, right click, join. And then if you wanted to join it to this, you could simply just get your big selection tool. So if you have one element overlying another element like this, just simply get your big selection tool, click on this element, hold down the shift key to queue up your selection, click on the bodice, go over to your pathfinder, which is on the right, or you can also find window and then pathfinder. And then simply just go to Unite. And what that does, it just joins these two elements so we don't. it's now one item. And we could maybe start to add some details. So if I get my pen tool, I could click opposite. Let's click to the center line, let's go slightly lower down. Let's click here as well. Let's go to our Convert Anchor Point tool. Let's click and drag, hold down the Shift key to keep it, uh, keep that bezier on the horizontal. And then we could just simply go to our stroke width and go one point. And that's basically a seam. So now we're starting to add, uh, let's say, different, we're adding, starting to add little design features to kind of create more of a, less of a silhouette and more of an actual product. And here, for example, if we didn't like uh, this curve, for example, we could just simply click and drag this out. We could maybe add some sort of like, let's say, ruching here, for example. So once you've got a basic outline, you can then start to adapt it and play with it. 
But I'm going to work with the bodycon styles because they're really nice and simple and it's easy for this tutorial. So, but it's just to give you an idea of how you'd basically start to change things. Like for the neckline, we get our small section tool, click and drag. We could have a bit of a boat neck, click and drag. We could even bring this up. Okay, so it just gives you a really easy way to start to adapt and create designs just by making some very slight adjustments. You know, we could bring this down to here, for example. We could change this. But once again, because I've done it to this side, it's probably best to then snip, snip, delete this side, click on this, right click, transform, reflect, copy, drag it across the opposite side, and then obviously we can join these. Average, join, average, right click, join. I've made that a little bit too small, but that's fine. We can just move those points out. Same with this one. Okay, so it just gives you an idea of how we can actually start to do this. But, however, these silhouettes are very basic. So let's just grab this dress here. So this is great, but it's not particularly, it doesn't inform anyone. It's just a silhouette. So now we're going to start adding some details to um, this block. So once again, let's just raise these armholes. Because they were a little bit too low to begin with, we can change this as well. Maybe move that shoulder in. Let's just snip it on the front. Snip it on the front. Delete this side. Select the block. Transform. Reflect. Copy. Move it across to the left. Join these. Join. Okay, so let's add some actual darts and some other sort of like detailing to make this look a little bit more realistic. So with my pen tool, I'm going to click on the pen tool. I'm going to go over to Stroke. And I'm just going to make this one. So at the moment, our silhouette or outline is, is, two, is a two-point two line. I'm going to use a one-point line. And the reason why is because the outline of a garment is, let's say, the outline of a garment. It's like a finished edge, whereas a seam is not. And so therefore, when you add, let's say, a French dart to the bust, if we use one, you can see that it looks like it's an actual seam and not, let's say, the edge or the finish of a garment or the finished edge of a garment. So we're just kind of like creating identifiers to identify that that is a seam and it is not, let's say, the outline or a finished edge. If, for example, you were to add a pocket, like here, for example, this is not going to be particularly pretty, but let's just do it anyway. I could then maybe curve this edge here. Don't worry too much about what I'm doing. I'm going to show you how to do this at a later point. You could then simply draw a line across this area here, and then we could then make that two points. And as you can see, we now have something that resembles a pocket because this looks like an opening edge and this does looks like a, a seam, for example. Let's just get rid of this. So let's start adding some details. So once again, I'm going to go my pen tool just here. And we're going to make sure that that is one point. Let's also remove this fill. So we want the black stroke, but we want to remove that fill. And now let's start adding. So I'm going to add a French bust dart. So let's just click here. And I can even go down to the waist, add some waist shaping, and then just below the top hip line, like so. And then we go to our Convert Anchor Point tool. I can click and drag, hold down the Shift key to lock it to the vertical. Same here, click and drag. And also, let's say I get my Snip tool or my scissors, and I could just simply cut here and here because we don't want a pointy bust, and darts generally finish away from the bust line. I could even get my Small Selection tool, click on this point. I could even drag it further away. I could manip manipulate that dart however I wanted to. Etc. So now we've added a few little darts, and I'm only doing this to one side at this point, okay? Because I don't want to do it to both just yet, because whatever changes I make to this side, I'm going to then mirror and reflect onto the opposite side. So, for example, you could say, well, actually, you know, we're going to have like a shoulder seam here. We could even make this more sort of like a strap style. So, to do that, once again, get your small section tool, click on that point, and just drag it to where you want it to be. Click on this point, drag it, etc. And you could even, if you wanted to, it's up to you, whatever your design, whatever you're creating for your design, get your pen tool, you could even add some ruching. So click, you could do like this, for example. Click on the pen tool again, maybe do one here. So maybe a dart, click on the pen tool. Click off, click on the pen tool, like that. But this looks like it's a seam because obviously we've got seams here. So we're gonna use a whole different level. We're gonna change the line width. So, once again, my small selection tool, click on this line, hold down the shift key to queue up your selection, so to add to your selection, click, 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 and then here let's make this 0.35. And so now you can see we're starting to build up the concept that this might be not a seam, but possibly a pleat. And you could even, let's say, go to your small section tool. Uh, we could then, we've got a big section tool, click on this line, hold down the shift key, click, click, click. We could then go object and then group these. 
So now it's one item as opposed to individual items. And we could even just shrink this down. We could make it smaller. You know, we could pull it in. We could make these really, really very, very fine. But of course, the line width has also changed. So we could always go back here and just go 0.35. Okay, so I'm just showing that you can simply add some very simple details to your silhouette to give it more of a, let's say, a style. For example, with a neckline, you could get your pen tool. You could click here, for example. Click here, you can click and drag. Hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal and we're now we're gonna start creating like a neck trim. Okay, maybe move this point up a little bit. And then what we're gonna do at the bottom here, we can even, let's say, add like a little hem detail. Click and drag. Try and line it or make it parallel to the bottom here. Click off and then you could go to dashed line. So in your stroke, you could go to dashed line. And we can make this three and 1.5. So the dash is three and the gap is 1.5, hit enter. And so now we've added like a stitching line. And you could even select this and make this, well actually it's not a seam, 0.5. So we're now starting to build up some concepts. Same with this one here. You could simply get your pen tool, or even, let's get our big section tool, click on this line here, copy, paste. Let's just paste that in, overlay it. Get our small section tool, click on this point, nudge it up ever so slightly, click on this point, nudge it along ever so slightly, and then we could go dashed line. And it will remember what you had previously, and this could be 0.5. Okay, so I'm just showing you how to create some fun, sort of like very, very simple detailing. But once you've created that detailing, once again, we've only done it on one side, I'm gonna get my big selection tool, and what I'm gonna do is actually, to make this easier, I'm gonna get my big selection tool, I'm gonna click on this outline, go to object, and then lock selection. So now we can't select it. Let's zoom out. I'm gonna click and drag with my big selection tool, I'm going to go object, group, so now this is all one item. I'm then going to go right click, transform, reflect, and then hit vertical and copy. I'm just going to drag that over to the opposite side, like so. Zoom in, you can always nudge it with your arrow keys just to make sure we're on that center line. Perfect. And okay, so for example, our, actually let's do it a different way. Let's just get rid of that. So I'm gonna unlock everything. So you can just go object and then unlock or lock and then unlock all. I'm going to click on my model template, object, lock, selection. And then here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my, my block. I'm gonna select it, gonna get my scissor tool. I'm gonna snip at that center front line at the neckline and snip here as well. And I'm just going to get my small section tool click on this side and then hit backspace a few times to delete that element completely. Then I get my big section tool, click and drag over all of this, right click, transform, reflect, and then copy. And I can drag this over to the right, try and align it with that center front line. You can use it arrow keys to nudge, like so. And now I'm just gonna start individually joining these. So get your small section tool, click and drag, right click, join. We can zoom in, don't worry about the elements being lost. The reason why is when you join something, essentially it brings it to the very top. And so these elements on this side were, are now below that, uh, let's say, layer. But it's very simple to fix. Just go to our small selection tool, select the element, go to object, arrange, and then send backward. And you can keep doing that, keep sending it back. There's also a shortcut for this as well. If you hit command and then open square bracket, it'll send it right to the back. If you, or if you uh, hit the command key on your keyboard and then hit the close square bracket, it'll bring it up through the layers. Okay, so you can just go up and down through the layers using those open square bracket and close square bracket. So open square bracket to go down the layers and close square bracket, so command close square bracket to go up the layers. Anyway, so let's just put it to the back. I'm gonna go object and then lock selection just so we can't edit it. Let's zoom in and we can now just click and drag over these two endpoints. So our small section tool, click and drag over these two endpoints, right click, average. That will bring, so if we click both, it'll bring both those points together, right click, join. Same with these ones, click and drag over those two endpoints with the small selection tool, right click, average. Okay, and then right click, join. And we can go down, let's go down to the bottom here with the hem. Click and drag, right click, average. Okay, right click, join. Okay, so this is how we add a little bit of, let's say, very, very simple design features to our dress. Let's just go object and then unlock everything. And let's select the um, model template. It's a big section tool. Click on it, object, and then lock selection. So now we can then edit our, or we can, we have our dress. But at the moment, they're all individual items, so we probably want to group them. So big section tool, click and drag over the whole dress, object, group, and now it's one element. So I could, essentially, 
Copy and paste, paste this off to one this side here. Let's just get rid of these. And maybe I want to create a bodice version of this. Well, let's go and have a look. So to do that, let's create the bodice version. So once again, as I did before, I'm gonna get my scissor tool. I'm gonna to snip at the waist. I'm also gonna snip at the waist here for the waist shaping darts. Snip, snip, snip. Get my small selection tool, click and drag over this whole lower portion of the block, and then just hit backspace a few times. You wanna hit backspace a few times because it might leave elements. So for example, if I do that and hit backspace once, you can see there are little elements that have been left behind, which is a real problem. So just hit backspace a few times to get rid of them. And then now I can get my pen tool, click on this point, go slightly lower, click, and then join. And then convert anchor point tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key to lock it to the horizontal. And also get my small section tool. I can click on this dart here, this dart leg, and then just move it down. Hold down the shift key so it, it moves down in alignment. Click, hold down the shift key, drag, and there we go. Maybe I don't want these darts at all. I can simply select them, hit backspace a few times, and here's our block. Maybe I even want to change this neckline. I could grab, let's say, so if I zoom in, get my small selection tool, click on this point, drag it down, click on this point, drag it down, hold down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. And we could put it there. I can even use my arrow keys to so just nudge that down. Looking good. And then I can do exactly the same with my neckline here. Just grab that point, click and drag it down, holding down the shift key. And so now we have a slightly different style top. I could even, for example, uh, so let's get our plus anchor point tool. Click, I could click on this point here. I could then get my direct selection tool. Click on this point, move it to roughly about here. Okay, that line's crossing over. So let's get our convert anchor point tool. Click and drag, try and trace that existing line click and then drag this back into position. You could curve it, you could do whatever you wanted to depending on the style of your garment. And also maybe there's a little bit too much, let's say, ease here. Get my small section tool, click on that point, and then just my arrow keys, just nudge that in to make it a little bit more shaped. Same with this, I could move that in. I could even, let's say, take that down to here or maybe have it here, or I could even remove it completely. And I could even get my pen tool and start to add some like ruching. So click and drag. Pen tool, let's zoom in for this. Click, click and drag. Hit the A key to remove the selection, go to the pen tool again. Click, drag, hit the A button, go to the pen tool, click and drag. I'm just gonna do a few of these, like that for example. Let's do a little bit of ruching here. And then my big section tool, click on this line, hold down the shift key to queue up your selection. Click, 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 click. Let's make this 0.35. Great, and we can even, let's go object and then group it so it's one item. We can move it around now. I could even go copy V, so sorry, copy and paste it, place it, let's say, next to it, and I can go to my rotation tool, click on this point here, and then just rotate that out. So I'm starting to sort of like, let's say, use that as a template. I could even get my small section tool. We could click and drag this in, maybe move these points around so it doesn't look so obvious that it's been uh, copied and pasted. You know, move this to here, for example. And then even get your big section tool, click on this element, hold down the shift key, click on this element, right click, sorry, right click, and then transform, reflect. Let's just hit copy, and move this off to the opposite side. So you now have a top that is, let's say, so it's a very, very different top that it was before, but once again, this is now asymmetric. So we'd have to do exactly the same thing to the opposite side. But that's very simple, get your small section tool, click on this element, Let's go to the snip tool, cut here, cut here. Get my small section tool, click on this, and then just hit backspace a few times, get rid of that dart, backspace a few times. Get my small section tool, click on this element, right click, transform, reflect, copy, drag it off to the opposite side, hold down the shift key so it locks to the horizontal axis, match it up, and then once again, get your small section tool, click and drag, right click, average, okay, right click, join, Click and drag, right click average, okay, right click join. Great stuff, and then if I wanted to then copy and paste this off, I'd get my big section tool, click and drag over the whole element, go object and then group, so it's all one item, like that. And I could then just simply copy and paste this off the opposite side. So now we've got two very, very different tops, all using that existing silhouette and also the model template, proportionate model template. But it's really important to mention here as well, the reason why we're using the proportionate model template is because 
if you were to look at the body and wanted to create a design, um, you could tell that maybe this is like maybe seven centimeters away. This is a 2CM, let's say trim. You know, this could be, let's say 15, but because it's on a proportionate model template, we can actually kind of like estimate that with our eye just by looking at the garment. You know, we could then even pull this out. So it's like a flare, same here as well, like a flare. You know, there's all different kind of things you can do with the top, but you're doing it on a proportionate model template. So now we know that this is, let's say, 2CM up from the top line, and this is at the waistline, etc. So it just makes it far, far easier. And you can see how quickly you can start to produce these designs. Uh, let's go in, for example, we could even do something like, we could move this whole thing up, get our small section tool, click and drag over these three bottom points, use the arrow keys on our keyboard, nudge it up, maybe pull this down a little bit, and make it almost like a little crop, bring this in, whatever. The choice is yours, it all depends on your project. But I'm just showing you how to create basic silhouettes and then populate it with very simple details to create these really sort of like simplistic but important designs. Oh sorry, import, yeah, these simplistic designs but they are based on your project and also on the silhouette. But there's one other thing we need to do here. So whenever we create the front, we're also going to want to create the back as well. It's very, it's brilliant having a front, but we don't know what the back looks like at all. Is there a zip on the side? Is there a zip on the back? You know, like how do we get into this dress? Is it just a slip on? So now to create, so let's create back pieces for these three different garments. So let's get the big section tool. Let's click and drag. Let's just move these ones out of the way. We can move this one out of the way as well. Give it a little bit of space. We can add a back panel here. It's really simple. We don't have to go onto the back now and draw this. All we need to do is simply get our big section tool, click and drag over the whole element, go uh, edit, copy, edit, paste. So we've pasted it in, we'll just put it next to it. And so now I can basically start to turn this into the back. The silhouette's gonna pretty much remain the same because obviously the side seam dictates the front as it dictates the back. But what I can do is start to change the back neckline. So I could get my small section tool, click and drag over these three points here, and then just move these up with my arrow keys. Just nudge this up until we have more of a back neckline shaping. And you can see, because I've moved them up, we've got some slight little issues here. So what I could do is, let's move it up. Let's get um, this point, so small selection tool. Let's click on this point, hold down the shift key, click on this point, and then just nudge that up ever so slightly until the trim is the same or similar. You can move these points around just by clicking and using the arrow keys. So this is now our back. And for example, we have a back, we have a center back line, because obviously we need a center back for this dress. So let's just get our line tool. I'm going to click and drag all the way down the center back, holding down the shift key to lock it to the vertical. And let's just make this line width, let's make it two for now. We don't want a dashed line. There we go. Okay, so that looks like it's an opening all the way down the back of the dress. So what we could do now is get our small section tool, click on this line, go to the cut tool, and then roughly about, just about here, we could snip it so we have two separate lines. So this is the top, this would be the zip area, and this would be the center back seam. And I want to make sure it looks like a seam, so I'm just going to select the line. So small selection tool, select the line, and let's make it, what is it, is it one? Yeah, it's one. So let's just select this and let's make it one point. Oops. So as you can see, it now looks like it has a center back zip to just below the top hip line, and this is obviously a seam. And we've also changed this. But obviously with the French dart, we're not going to have a French dart on the back because we don't have bus shaping on the back. So I get my small selection tool, select this, hold down the shift key, select the opposite side, hit backspace a few times. And you could then also change these, move them out ever so slightly because they are slightly different on the back. Okay, so that's how we create our back. And then I can get my big section tool, click and drag, object, let's just group them to make sure. And there we have our back piece and you can overlay them just to see how they would work. So now this is very, very simple. Um, and if you wanted to, let's say, give an example of the back showing through on the front, you get your big section tool, click on this, copy and paste, drag this over your front, and then using the layers, so go object, arrange, center back, we've sent it to back, and now as you can see, it looks like a three-dimensional garment because that back panel is basically behind the front. And we can then get our big selection tool, click and drag over the whole item, and go object, and then group. And now it's one whole piece. Okay, so that's how you kind of like create a back. We could do the same here. So this is slightly different because obviously the back is gonna be quite dramatically different to the front, depending on your design. Let's get our big section tool. Let's click on this. Let's go copy and paste. And then here, for example, you could do exactly the same thing. 
So let's say we probably don't want all this ruching or gathering on the back. So what I'd do is I could select all of these, but I also have my outline selected, so we don't want that. So let's just hold down the Shift and Option key, and then just select that outline layer and get rid of it. And then we can hit Backspace a few times. We could then get our Small Section tool, click to find those three lines, and let's just move that up like this, for example, which is looking quite cool. And we can move this down ever so slightly just to make sure we have a very consistent, let's say, neckline. And then here we could maybe move this up to here. We could then change that bezier, just make sure it's in line with that trim, like so. But obviously, to do the same on the opposite side, we might get it slightly wrong, it might not look exactly right. So what I'm going to do is, instead of doing that, I'm going to get my scissor tool. I'm going to get my, sorry, I'm going to get my small section tools to select the item. Get my scissor tool, snip, snip. Let's get our small section tool, select this element, and then hit backspace a few times. And then let's get our big section tool, click on this. Well, actually, let's get our small section tool, select this element, right click, transform, reflect, and then hit copy, move it off to the opposite side, like so. Then let's join these, average, join, small section tool, select those two endpoints, average, OK, right click, join. Great stuff. And we could even put in a back seam here if we wanted to, or maybe we could put in a keyhole. So for example, we could do click here. Let's click and then drag to create a keyhole effect. Do the same again. So with this trim, I could click and then let's go to here, click and drag, trying to create a parallel line. Let's remove the fill. Let's then make that line one. Got a big section tool. Select this element, hold down the shift key to queue up your selection, select this element, right click, transform, reflect, copy, drag it off to the opposite side, hopefully trying to make those match up. And then we can get our small section tool and try and select. Okay, so basically because this has got a fill on it, we're actually selecting this panel. So what you could do is go object and then lock selection. Click and drag with these two endpoints. So we're not, we can no longer edit this this outer silhouette, which gives us access to these points here. Small section tool, click and drag, right click, average, OK, right click, join. Same for this one. Click and drag, right click, average, OK, right click, join. And then we can also use Pathfinder as well. Let's go to our Pathfinder. And I'm just going to make sure so I can unite these two points. Let's just unite. Same with this one. You could unite. But to be fair, you might not want to unite those. You want to keep it quite simple. Do the same here. Oops. Let's get rid of that. And then what you could do is, so for this little element here, you could just simply select this element and then go to the fill and make it white. And what that'll do is that will kind of make it seem like it's an opening. You could even get a line and then click and drag here just to show there's an opening. You could even offset it to one side like that, which kind of denotes that it kind of overlaps. You could either put in a button as well, so get your ellipse tool, click and drag, hold down the shift key to make it consistent. So shift key will make a consistent circle, just like that. Go to your, we can make this one. Let's give it a fill. So let's make it, let's say a darker gray. Big section tool, click and drag, let's place it here. And that gives you a very, very simplistic, let's say little keyhole concept. And you could even, if you wanted to, get your small section tool, click on this little corner here. And you see this little element just here? You can click and drag that, and that will curve that corner. Okay, so we're just adding some really basic little concepts here, but I'm not going to do that. And then once again, so I've got my big section tool. Also, let's go object, and then, okay, this is unlocked, which is good. I'm just going to click and drag of this whole element, object, and then group. Click and drag this off to the opposite side. In fact, no, let's copy it, copy and paste move this off to the opposite side. And because we've used the existing template or the front template, it should match up absolutely perfectly. And then we can just go object, arrange, and then center back. There we go. Let's just go click and drag these with a big section tool, click and drag over both and go object and then group. And for the front, we could do the same thing. So we get the front, copy and paste. We're gonna paste that onto the back. And let's just go object, arrange, center back, and there we have a back and a front. So once again, get your big section tool, click and drag over this, object, group. Just make sure when you finish up, just to group these elements. So that when you move it, it moves as one whole piece. 
Same for this one, and this is the last one I'm gonna do before we move on to the next section, which is kind of creating more dynamic or interesting, let's say, products. So let's copy and paste this off to the opposite side. Let's create the back. So I'm gonna take all of these points here. Let's move this to here, for example. We could even create like a yoke. I'm gonna remove some of these lines. So I get my small section tool, click on this element here, object, lock, selection, so we don't edit it. Click and drag over these elements here. So small section tool, click and drag, hit backspace a few times. And then here, perhaps, get my small section tool, click on that point, we can move it up. Let's select the stitch line, click on that point, move that up. And here, what can we do for this concept or design? Do the same thing, really. But it's up to you, whatever your design is, you can play around with it. Maybe here you want to create something different, so let's click. Let's go, so that's our center line. Let's do something like that. So we have a bit of a scoop in the back. Whether that's even feasible as a garment, I'm not sure, but let's just do it anyway. So once again, let's get our pen tool. Let's click, let's find that center line. Click and then drag. You can get your small selection tool, select that endpoint, nudge it down. Let's add a trim to this as well. Click that point there, click slightly lower, try and create a parallel line. There we go. We want to make that one to keep it consistent with our seam. We also want to remove the fill. And we could even put like a little stitching line here as well. So I get my big section tool, click on that line, copy and paste. Click, drag that up. Get that little bottom piece, nudge it around, move it up, move it to the center front, or sorry, the center back line. Change this bezier ever so slightly. And then we could give it a dash line and make sure it's 0.5. Great, and then once again, what we do is, I'm gonna get the outline here. So let's get my small section tool, click on the outline. Let's go to the scissor tool. Let's cut it here, and let's cut it here. Let's get our small section tool, click on this, hit backspace a few times. And then now with my small selection tool, with my big section tool, click and drag. Where is it, okay, that's grouped. In fact, you know what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get my small section tool, click and drag. I'm just gonna hit backspace. And now I can just grab the whole thing. It's just easier. So before, what I was going to do is just rotate, sorry, transform these two. And it's just easier if I just get my small section tool, select those two endpoints, hit backspace once. And then now I can get my big section tool, click and drag, right click, transform, reflect, copy, drag it off to the opposite side. Make sure that it matches up. Like so, get my small section tool, click and drag, Join, let's do the bottom, click and drag, join. Let's then go object, arrange, center back. Object, arrange, center back. Ah, it's because it's grouped, so let's get our big section tool. Click on the item, you see how it's grouped with this, so that's why it's not, it's, we aren't able to center the back. Let's go object, ungroup. Let's click on the outline again. Oh, it's still grouped, so let's go object, ungroup. Click on the outline again. Now it's not grouped with anything. We can go object, align, sorry, arrange, center back, which is great. So this is one item. Let's go Pathfinder just to make sure it's united. We can then go object, lock, selection. And now we can start to click. So let's click and drag over these two elements. Right click, average, okay. Right click, join. Same with these ones. Right click, average. Right click, join. We can lock that as well, object, lock selection, so then we can access just this one. Right click, average, okay, join. And then here, if we want this to be open, I'm gonna show you compound path as well, actually, which would be quite interesting. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the fill completely. So I'm gonna select this element, just remove the fill, and then here I'm gonna to go to my pen tool. I'm gonna to click on this point. I'm gonna click just below it, click on this point as well. Then let's move that point up. So I'm just mapping that trim that we have. We can nudge it up perhaps. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a compound path, which is, let's go to object and then unlock all. I'm gonna select my outline layer here. And I'm also gonna hold down the shift key. So get my big section tool, select the outline layer, hold down the shift key, select this internal layer or this inside piece. And I'm gonna go right click, make compound path. And what it does is it basically cuts this section out from the outline. So now, it's, instead of me filling this with white, I just simply cut it or use it to cut it from the existing outline, which makes this 
an actual empty space. And because it's now brought it to the top layer, get my big section tool, click on the outline, object, arrange, center back. Great stuff. And that's it. So let's go to my big section tool, click and drag. In fact, now let's put in a center back scene. So click and drag here. We could even move that point up. Then let's make it one, then get my big section tool, click and drag, object, group, copy paste it, add it to the front just by overlaying it. Let's go object, align, sorry, arrange, center back. So that's my front concept. That's not aligned perfectly here, you can see. So let's just make sure it is aligned. I'm not sure why it's slightly smaller, but that's fine. We can correct that just simply by getting that point and bringing it in. Or what you can do is get your small section tool, click and drag over these two elements, then go average. Click and drag over these two elements, average. Great, so this is my front. Let's get the, the front block, copy and paste. So I'm pasting it onto the back now. Let's just go object, arrange, center back. Get my big section tool, click and drag over these two elements, object, group, click and drag, object, group. So now you can see this is quite a complicated top but we now have the back panel, which is here, and we have the front panel, which is here. And also, if you want to add a little bit more depth to these, let's say, um, spec drawings, I'm going to get my small section tool. I'm going to click on this back panel here. I'm then going to change the color to be a slightly darker gray. And as you can see, we've already added a bit of depth to this. So in other words, you can see it's almost like a shadow. So just by changing the color of the front and the back, we can then give it a little bit more depth. Same for this one. So let's go to the small section tool, click on the back, or oh, sorry, this is the front because obviously this is the back panel. So I'm clicking on the front, which is behind the back. And let's just make this slightly darker. There we go. Perfect. So that is how you create uh, front and back using some basic detailing and then obviously adding a little bit of depth uh, to your illustration to show that there's a shadow. And once again, it's really important that you use, let's say, two point for your outlines, let's say one point for your seams, and then 0.5, sorry, 0.35 for your pleats, and then let's say 0.5 for your dashed lines. If, for example, we had them all the same width, so I've selected everything here, let's just make it all one. You can see that it's good, but it doesn't have that kind of feeling of, it doesn't feel as real as it does here, you see? So that's why we use different line thicknesses to denote, well, just to make it a little bit prettier, but also to denote, denote parts of the product. So once again, 1.4 seam allowance, 0.5 for stitching, 0.35 for pleats or ruching, and then two for the outline of the block. And they're looking really nice, they're looking really cool. And it's quite, once you get the hang of this, it can be, you can be quite quick when it comes to creating illustrations. Okay, so that's part one complete. In part two, I'm gonna show you how to create sleeves and add yet more design details to your silhouettes. Also, if you've enjoyed this tutorial and you're new to this channel, then hit the subscribe button. Uh, we've got some amazing content coming your way that we'd hate for you to miss. In the meantime, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.